In this lesson, we're going to be graphing tangent and cotangent. And actually, this is going to be part one. Um, so, tangent and cotangent is definitely different than your sines and cosines. Um, and I'm going to kind of cheat this a little bit. Um, technically, it doesn't have an amplitude. The midline is kind of... Um, but I'm going to try to treat this as much as I can as far as uh, same language, same everything that I would be doing with a sine and a cosine. Now, the graph is very, very different. Tangent, um, the period is different, first off, that one full cycle from here to here is pi instead of 2 pi. Same thing with cotangent. From here to here, one full cycle uh, from asymptote to asymptote basically is pi. So it repeats itself more frequently than sines and cosine does. Um, but it still has a value that's going to vertically stretch it, which I'll cheat in a little bit and call it an amplitude. We still are going to have a vertical shift, which I kind of, again, kind of cheat and call it a midline. Um, your period is still going to be affected by the B, and your phase shift is still going to shift it left and right. So again, anything on the outside vertically affects your graph, anything on the inside horizontally affects your graph. So some of the language is not exactly true, but as long as I can keep it as consistent as possible to sines and cosines, I just think it helps the cause. So um, first thing is just to kind of look at the graph. Um, tangent of 0 is 0, tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and then when you get to tangent of pi over 2, you get yourself an asymptote. And then on the other side, tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1, and then pi, tangent of negative pi over 2. So tangent always looks like that. Cotangent is kind of a reciprocal-ish, but instead of it being, this one's kind of centered around the origin, and two spots are to the right, two spots are to the left. Um, this one is going kind of like sines and cosines, where you're starting at the origin and kind of graphing out from there. But it does go from asymptote to asymptote. Now, a quick idea of why the heck this looks like this, as opposed to tangent, uh, it goes to the idea that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So, if you look at the tangent graph, and if we're kind of focusing around the origin, as we get smaller and smaller and smaller, as we're approaching zero from this side, the reciprocal of something that's getting infinitely small is infinitely large. So that gap between here, if you're going from pi over 4 and you're squeezing in, pi over 4 squeezing in, here you're getting infinitely small, which makes this side get infinitely large. Um, as you're approaching 1, the reciprocal of 1 is still 1. And then here, as you're getting closer and closer to this asymptote, you're getting infinitely large as you approach pi over 2. Well, the reciprocal of that would be infinitely small. So infinitely large, reciprocal would be infinitely small. So it ends up having a downward direction as opposed to an upward direction for tangent. But it's all about the reciprocals. All right, so if we're going to graph this, we're graphing tangent of 2x. So again, this kind of cheats it a little bit, but amplitude is going to be 1, which basically means I have no vertical stretch. So I'm still going to go up 1 and down 1 like I normally would. And then my period is going to be pi over b, which is that. So my period is going to be pi over 2. Um, my phase shift, aka any left and right shift, would be any adding and subtracting, which I don't have. So I have nothing for that. And my midline is a vertical uh, shift. I don't have that because I would need some plus or minus kind of outside of the tangent. So nothing going on for that. So if I graph this, I'm going to be kind of centered around the origin. I'm going to put two spots to the right, two spots to the left. Um, my period is going to be from here to here, so that distance is going to be pi over 2. Half of it's on the right, half of it's on the left. So if half of it's on the right, I'll cut my period in half, and then the other half is on the left. That's where my asymptotes are going to be. Tangent goes asymptote to asymptote. And then pi over 4 cut in half is going to be pi over 8. And this will be a negative pi over 8. Um, I don't have any kind of left and right up and down. So when I start plotting my points, my center is still in the center. 
There wasn't any kind of a midline or phase shift to switch, uh, shift it up and down or left and right. And then um, we don't have any kind of special amplitude. We have no vertical stretch going on. So my main points are going to be a one and a one. So I'm out here, down here, and there's my tangent graph. Now it really looks identical to this one. The difference is your scale. That this is pi over 2, that's pi over 4. So um, basically this whole graph is fitting inside this window because of the period. But otherwise the graph should look pretty much identical. We just kind of shift the scale around to make it fit appropriately. All right, so let's notch it up a little bit. Um, make it look like that. So we're going to graph one more tangent, and again, we're going to talk about the amplitude. Amplitude's going to be 3, so we are vertically stretching our graph. That's going to reflect it, so it's going to actually give it a cotangent feel, even though we're graphing tangent because of the reflection. Um, period is going to be pi divided by b, which is that. So pi divided by 1 fourth is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're looking at a 4 pi. So we'll go 2 pi on one side, 2 pi on the other side. Cut it in half. And then um, phase shift. Phase shift, again, would be any kind of adding and subtracting within the tangent, which we don't have. And for our midline, well, there is no plus or minus on the outside. OK. So we still do our 1, 2 in this direction, 1, 2 in this direction. The difference is from asymptote to asymptote, the period is 4 pi. So let me just draw that in. Um, so half the graph's on the right, half the graph's on the left. So that's going to be 2 pi. That's a negative 2 pi. And if we cut it in half, it's pi. It's negative pi. Um, we do have a vertical stretch, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Um, all right, so we've taken care of the period, asymptote to asymptote, so that distance is four pi. The, we don't have any phase shift, we don't have any midline adjustments, and so our amplitude, which again is kind of cheating in a little bit, is we're going to be stretched up three. So. Our graph is going to be centered at 0, 0. We're shift stretched up 3 and down 3. Now that's what it would have normally been. However, we are vertically reflecting this. So this point gets vertically reflected down here. And this point gets vertically reflected up here. So our graph is kind of narrow. And it really kind of has the feel of a cotangent. The biggest difference with cotangent is cotangent kind of starts here, and then your cotangent would start at the origin, and then the asymptote would be out here, and then it would kind of drop down. Where tangent is centered around the origin, um, and then it normally goes up, but because of the reflection, it goes down. So really, if you had a cotangent graph that has a phase shift back, then really you could create exactly the same thing. So, all right, so that was the first two, so that's part one. Um, we'll do another part that is gonna have, we'll do a cotangent graph and a tangent graph that has everything. So not um, just an amplitude, not just a period, but we're gonna have phase shifts and midlines all kind of thrown together. All right, that'll be on the next one.